Welcome to Win Creativity Knox All-Star Designer Holiday Series. Today, Judy Watanabe and I are going to share two ideas to get you ready for New Year's Eve. I just love making New Year's cards. They're really fun, they're very festive, and incredibly colorful, at least mine are. So one of the things that I have here is I have this card with all of this splashy color, and I'm gonna show you how to make that. So, I start out with some Judykin's Embossable Window Plastic. It's a clear plastic, and I use this to make window cards. But the great thing about it is you can emboss it. So I just take my stamp, I've got this dandelion puff, but I thought it kind of looked like a firework. I'm gonna ink up my stamp and I just stamp it on the, on the clear plastic. Now I know you can't really see this um, because it's clear on this clear sheet of plastic, but if I kind of hold it up to the side, I could see that the stamped image is on there. I'm gonna add another image. This is another crazy little puffy guy. We just kind of ink this up and stamp it. And then one more just to give it a little bit of extra decoration. This one is kind of fun. This is called the poppy stamen. It's kind of the center of the poppy flower. But because it's sort of open and airy, it looks like fireworks. Now, what I'm gonna do is emboss this. So I'm gonna lay my plastic down in my snappy tray here, because this is gonna collect all of the powder. And I sprinkle the whole thing with frosted twinkle embossing powder. You're gonna pick up the plastic, and then you just shake out the excess powder, kinda careful here, just like so. And if you get a little bit of powder that's sticking, that's kind of sticking to my fingerprints. I just give it a nice big thunk and that knocks off the excess powder. Um, you know, if you want to and you're not at home or somebody else vacuums, just kind of knock it off and somebody else will take care of it. Okay, then flip this over and I get my heat gun out here and we're just gonna heat this up. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see this. One of the things is that sometimes you can overheat the plastic and it will warp, so you gotta work quickly. If you find that you're heating it too, if it gets too hot, just pull the heat gun away and that's enough to keep it from buckling. I don't know if you could see the powder changing. It changes from like a light white to a bright white, but you can also see all of those sparklies There we go. All done. And that is the embossed embossing on top of the window plastic. Now let's add the color. I'm gonna flip this over on the back side. I like having the tissue paper because that kind of gives you some texture and you'll see that in just a second here. I'm gonna use some diamond glaze and I squeeze out the diamond glaze and you wanna squeeze out about a two or three inch diameter of diamond glaze. And you're gonna spread it with your finger. The nice thing about diamond glaze is it cleans up with water while it's still wet, but once it's dried, it's kinda of permanent. So 
I really like that because that's how I'm going to have all of this color stick to the plastic. So I spread out the diamond glaze and then using dye-based inks. And these are the inks that I use for just the regular ink pad. And just add maybe two or three drops of one color. And I know from elementary school that if you use, um, this is purple, so we just add one or two drops of the purple. But I also know if you use blue and the yellow, that mixed together will make green. So a couple of drops here. And then the final color is pink. This is hot pink. And the fun thing about the hot pink is sometimes this reacts with the diamond glaze and it actually makes it fluorescent pink. But if you use it with yellow, it kind of makes an orangey color. So you can kind of see the orange in the corner here and a little bit off to the side. And if you want to blend it together, you can mix it with your finger. The final step is a little bit of mica gloss. The mica gloss is the Judikins pearlescent ink, and if you just add one or two drops of this, this kind of gives your piece a nice shimmer. Then you're going to take your glitter, and this is a little bit different than the embossing powder because this you need to glue on with some kind of a glue, and diamond glaze is an adhesive. So this is just gonna give it a little bit extra sparkle. You take your Prisma glitter and you just sprinkle that on the surface of that wet diamond glaze, tinted with the different colors. Now that looks kind of, kind of messy actually, but I'm gonna take the tissue paper and that was the tissue paper that I showed you earlier. I'm gonna crumple it up, I'm gonna open it back up and then I'm gonna lay this down right on top of that wet diamond glaze. And what happens is that gives you some texture, it kinda has some wrinkles, and the diamond glaze puddles into those wrinkles. And when you flip it over, this is what you have. So let that dry. This is gonna take a couple of hours to dry, and you just leave it. I like to leave it gooey side up, just, to, just because um, this way it's not gonna stick to my, my working paper. But this is what it looks like when it's completely dry. I cropped it to the right dimension and then I attached that onto the base card, which is kind of this blue shimmery card. The final step is to use the Happy New Year. I also embossed that in the frosted white embossing powder and then I attached that onto my card. And now I have my finished card. New Year's Eve is coming and today I'm going to show you how to make some party stars. I started with some Floracraft Make It Fun foam stars and they were about five inches. They come in different sizes. I'm going to show you another option if you can't find the stars someplace near you. But these were ready made. They're about an inch thick and I wanted to give them this great metallic sparkle. So I used my Design Master Super Silver and it really, as you can see, is a great metallic effect. But before I sprayed them, I cut a little square to fit inside of the opening of the star because we're going to put something else there. And I used that to block. And then I sprayed the whole thing and I put two coats to make sure I got in all those little nooks and crannies. And then I flipped it and I did the same thing on both sides and just let it dry. Now once it's dry, because these party stars are going to have two functions, they were a little thicker than I wanted them to be at the one inch size. So I went to this fantastic tool that Floorcraft has. It is their Styro Cutter Plus. I don't know how I've lived this long without this tool. And you heat it up. We're going to show you how to use it in another video, but to give you an idea, it heats up and this element then is used to cut through the foam. And I literally just started at one side in the center of the star and slowly pulled it through. And I end up with two nice thin stars, which better suited what we were going to do with them. So once I had my star, I wanted to bling it up for New Year's. And how I did that, well, first I should show you how I did the center image. The center image is a vintage New Year's image that I found online. I found a few of them that I liked, sized them to the size that I wanted to make, and then I printed them on the Craft Attitude film with my inkjet printer. And once I got those images 
the size I want. When I'm using Craft Attitude, I start to peel back the corner so that it makes it a little easier to remove the backing once you've placed it on the surface that you want to place it on. And then you can either use a glue stick or diamond glaze from Judykins, or I used um, this great tacky spray. Any spray adhesive will work also. Spray the whole piece. And then you would put it onto your styrofoam and press it down. And then we'll find that little corner where you started to lift and peel it back. And it adheres to that styrofoam nice and tight. That's why we left that center square white. I found that if I tried to put it on the silver backing, you really couldn't see your vintage image as well. So I wanted the white backing. So once that step was complete, it was time to add our mosaic tile bling. And these are these fantastic, they're from the beatery and they're the clearly mosaics. They come in mirrored tiles and colors and um, neon and sparkly and all different things. And some of them are geometric and some of them are random shaped. They do make a grout to go with them, but I'm not using the grout for this particular application. I just used a tacky glue. I'm using Beacon's tacky glue, and I just began gluing them on all around my vintage image to just cover all the outside edges one at a time. It's a slow process, but when you're done, you have this great metallic image around the edge. I wanted to fill these in because I wanted to be able to use them for coasters. And I was a little bit concerned about the craft attitude getting wet or water getting beneath the tiles. So I used, DecoArt has this Americana triple thick glaze and it dries clear and it's very, very thick. So you don't need to put on as many layers as you would with a regular glazing type product. And I poured about, not quite a tablespoon, but a good amount so that it filled in and it kind of self leveled and went just into the edges around those stars. And then I let it dry. So now I've got a good waterproof surface if I want to use them as coasters. Because I might be going to use them as coasters, I also took some felt and just traced my star out. And then I used the same tacky glue to glue the felt on the back so that I've got some fun, festive party star coasters for my New Year's Eve party to toast the new year. But another way to use them is also as a centerpiece. And to do that, like I did with this, I took some skewers, some just bamboo skewers, painted them with the same metallic silver paint. And then the pointed end, I'm just pushed into my party star as far as I wanted it to go. And then you can add them to your arrangement but if you have your arrangement and you still want to use them as coaster, they're not glued in place so that you can still take your party stars off and use them both ways. They're fun when added with these wonderful LED lighted branches that Floracraft offers for a very festive kind of display. And the battery pack in this, I just hid with some crinkle. For a larger option, again, you can find these stars some places pre-cut, but you can also use their Make It Fun sheet foam and trace your own image and again use that fantastic styro cutter to cut larger size stars or any shape that you wanted for any holiday. And I did the exact same procedure with the mosaic I, and put the image and the glaze. I did not back these because I'm picturing them more as either on a wall decoration. You could even use them as a hot place maybe or under a bowl with a, with a dessert or something fun for New Year's. They're just kind of festive and fun and sparkly, and I love the element of the vintage New Year's images. There's some really fun ones online for you to use for something like this. So there you have it. It's quick, fairly quick, if you don't mind a little tedious tiling. But they're fun and festive and ready for your New Year's Eve party. Your mosaic stars and Judy's card were wonderful. Sparkle everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Find us on Flickr and pin us on Pinterest. And don't forget to sign up on our website to receive our weekly newsletter. And then you're automatically entered to win one of our weekly prize packages full of products from all of our series sponsors.